Hey guys, Sound Jack from Nerdy Geek Talk here, the source for all your nerdy geeky needs, here with episode four of the Misaligned Podcast. That's right, we're we back. back. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's just been hectic in our lives. It's been hard to get an episode recorded. Sounds like from what I've been hearing, what I heard from Eric, that that happened for a bunch of the other podcasts on the channel recently. But we're all back this week. Um, as long, well, there's one that's still in contention, but hopefully that'll be back this week as well. Um, you should check those out as well. But let us um, talk about this episode of Miss Align, which, if you are new to this or if you have forgotten what this is, this is a discussion of the lore of the aligned continuity. Thanks for that. Uh, I forgot what we were doing here, actually. <laughs> um, it's been so long. And, and we're going to tell you, uh, this is the point where it's getting confusing for us. Wait, um, this is the point I've been confused this whole time. So, this... for So the audience is at work, because... Zeus and I, um, just, oh, so yeah. Hi, at Soundjack and Zeus here. Say hey. hi, Zeus. Hi, uh, Zeus. Jared, Jared is not here, unfortunately. So, and since it's been a while for us, we figured we'd do it just the two of us. Um, but we've been on a Skype call for approximately 40 minutes at this point. <laughs> it's just been figuring out what we're doing. Cause at first, should I, should I even tell them? Does it matter? But, uh, I'll just give them like the the Spark Notes edition. Um, we thought we our original plan for today was Chapter Eight of the Covenant of Primus, which is the Age of Rust and Exodus, because I had falsely assumed that the Age of Rust was all was the only new material really that existed from the Covenant of Primus until we got to past Exodus and that stuff. Um, but it turns out there is new stuff at the very least, um, retcons of order of things, how they happen. So we've decided that, uh, the next chapter will be discussed separately. And this is also the same point in time. Well, we're at, we are currently at the point where the war is about to kick off and where we're going to be leaving Cybertron. There is a lot of different types of fiction that surround this era and the question and so, and a bunch of them contradict each other so the question but they also overlap. So the question was how do we order it? So our current order and what we are doing today is going to be chapter 8 of the Covenant of Primus, the Age of Rust. Then we are going to kind of talk about it the content we're going to have to we're going to end up in a chronologically fiction wise and a chronologically real world wise because next episode chapter episode five we'll be discussing the novel exodus following episode will be the um, the three video games set during that time period war for cybertron rise of the dark spark fall of cybertron then we can get to chapter nine of the Covenant of Primus in the following episode. And then we can discuss there, since this is like the finalized version of the Align continuity, basically, though we got an unreliable narrator here, we can discuss the real differences between the different tellings in that episode. Pretty much. I think. I think we got that worked out now, but let's get... Long let's, story uh, short, we're only doing eight this week instead of also covering Exodus, which was what I was going to say instead of giving away the whole plan because that ended up being like a solid minute and a half there. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I get rambly sometimes, but yes, Chapter 8, Age of Rust, is what we are talking about today since... That while it contains information from Exodus, it also contains extra information that is not included in Exodus and occurs before Exodus. So, um, starting the chapter, um, it's slightly a very slight recap of the previous chapter, which was the end of the Golden Age and settling into this new age, the Age of Rust. 
And let me tell you, this chapter goes into a lot of detail of a lot of the specifics of this era, which is probably important since this, again, this is leading up to what a lot of a line fiction discusses. So we got, so they wanted to set that up more. Um, as a reminder, because of the ru the rust plague that was spreading amongst the colony world, Cybertron is now closed off. They have no access to space bridges um, and no access to the other colony worlds. Um, it's like Japan, except this wasn't by choice. Yeah, this. Well, it was by choice, but the other choice was get consumed by rust. So I think this was the better choice. You, you, you would think. Okay, well, uh, I by, it's like Japan, but it, except this time it was necessary then. Yes, fair. Um, but they, the Cybertronian population decides to move forward, though. They do not dwell on the past too much. They move forward. Every mega cycle, it is noted that they do honor the past and honor those events and those lost and whatever. But for the most part, they move forward. However, by moving forward, they also rely on the past because the caste system that existed is strengthened as Cybertron, Cybertron is on lower energy and the High Council finds this to be a necessary course of action in order to maintain the Cybertronian population. Um, Do you know that they have... Do they explain why it's necessary, or is it just in, it's necessary, don't ask about it, because you're uh, not going to get questions answered, you're just going to get it, a punch It is the necessary face. because they have, they, the t from what, from what they're, they, blah, 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 sorry, they have a, a limited amount of energon left for the population, so it's the best way to manage it and control it, and best obtain it they think the caste system is the best way to do it with everyone in their structured roles, with their structured allotments of energon, with everyone that is best at mining dedicated to getting all of the energon they can okay. and efficiently. See, I didn't know that the caste system determined how much energon people would get. That's that's where the confusion was. I would presume as much. It's, that might have been a me thing. That might have been a presumption on my part. It makes Pulling. sense. Yeah. Because the only this, other way to say that, hey, the caste system works is to say, don't question it or you're going to get a fist to the face. Yes. Because I that's and, about the only way I can see it working. Yes. And as well as I don't believe it is stated in here, there is any like energon limitations between like higher like higher caste getting more energon and lower caste, whatever. That is the case in the caste system in the IDW continuity, so it's not necessarily a stretch to assume that would be a similar thing that would exist in this caste system. Um, yeah. but again, that's not really specified. Um, though, even though they are on, they are limited amounts of energon or a, li a finite amount of energon. Um, they do attempt to create other forms of energy production using chemical and nuclear reactions. However, on Cybertron, um, they can't be mass produced because of limited supplies to create the engines, or at least the limited chemicals and nuclear resources to do so, as well as the fact that the effort that they put into it did not equal the energy output that those kinds of engines created. So it's wasting money to make less money. Yes. The it's reward, it's or, like buying something, selling it on eBay, and not scalping it. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's entirely possible, like, they gained energy from doing it, but the amount was basically was little to non-existent that it wasn't even necessarily worth it for the energy yeah. that they had to put in to create it. Th that's a physics thing. I know this one. Uh, <laughs> no heat engine can be 100% efficient. That's like the second law of thermodynamics or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. There we um, go. Hey, something I learned in school actually helped me in the real world. Hey, and by uh, the real so world, I mean the robot world. Because <laughs> they're, uh, so they're real in yeah. here. In here, they're they're real in there. In his heart. Yeah, but uh, mine only, not yours. Yeah. 
Um, however, another thing from the real world that helps this robot world is the fact that they do, in fact, use utilize solar energy on Cybertron. Uh, <laughs> because actually, I think because the surface of the planet itself is actually naturally like solar absorbent. That's... If, I, if I read that sentence correctly, we utilize solar power since we already had photoreactive surface manufacture set up. Okay. So maybe they just had it, but it wasn't necessarily like the planet. Maybe they just built it. I don't yeah. know. This might have been during the they built it for like era. a different purpose, maybe, and they didn't realize that's what it did until they saw, hey, this thing is absorbing the sun. Maybe we could use that. Or it was um, Quintesson constructed. They really don't go into detail, though. Cons I'm, br I'm going to bring another continuity briefly into this: the movie continuity in the IDW comic tie-in movie comics it is and uh, well technically the movie encourages this too but it is noted that the all spark can be powered by solar energy so, literally they are in the in the idw movie comics they originally uncover the all spark because real jack just teleports a sun into their a, a, a teleports a sun to them the Allspark uncovers itself, gains power, and then Cybertron enters a new era of, of prosperity. That's confusing and or one of the stupidest things I've heard today. Yeah, it is. Uh, but I, don't, I don't understand this. I don't like that I don't understand this. <laughs> but anyway... That's movie continuity, um, but back to uh, Align continuity. Um, they did the system, because of the caste system, because of the limited amount of energy on, most people were limited to the projects that they were assigned to do. Um, when, there, when there was extra energy to allow them to use it for other things, they did attempt like space programs. However, for the most part, there wasn't really anything to do. An individual um, ambition was effectively stifled. So a lot of Cybertronians ended up resorting to violent entertainments, gambling, and extreme activities of all kinds. This is but, starting to sound like, I don't know, Soviet Russia or something. Where eh, no, one can, like, no one can afford to do anything because everyone has to be you know, rationing everything. So... There's nothing to do but work. Yeah. But the people do find alternate means of um, what would be described as more um, lesser or illegal endeavors, more illegal endeavors. Um, these particular endeavors include races, um, gambling, um, and gladiatorial combat. You know what, actually, Most I'm going to change matches. my answer. I'm going to change my answer. This sounds like prohibition. Because <laughs> that's when hey, NASCAR you. was started. And that's the only thing I know about NASCAR. <laughs> did, it, did it also inspire uh, death matches in the U.S. that were officially sanctioned? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm not from the 30s. I don't know. Uh I'm not necessarily exaggerating with that point. Um, Kaon City does become basically the center of this like underground AK or extra activities. Um, and there was a, a bit of vocality in um, stopping a lot of it, especially the more dangerous and the deathmatch stuff. However, while the council basically like sent like police in enforcement to watch it they did not stop it because they knew they realized they got to a point of society this was a this was a thing that was going to be done regardless if it was illegal or not so they allowed it to happen so at the very least they could be aware and keep an eye on it yeah. so they took a thing that they knew they couldn't stop doing and they regulated it yeah Marijuana. Yeah. Uh, no, they're 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 trying. They're still trying to kick kick out marijuana. Not in California. National the the at the national level. 
Or at the very least, they're encouraging the enforcement of the laws because political stuff, let's not get into that. Uh, yep. I just uh, did a thing as a joke and did not mean to spark a political debate. Anyway, uh, moving back into Cybertronian politics, um, while all of this illegal Kaon City stuff was occurring, well, quote unquote illegal Kaon City stuff was occurring, um, something called the, 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 the covenant notes of this, and this is not really relevant to anything, but it's just background information that's interesting, so I figured I'd note it because it's probably not noted anywhere else. Um, temperance, something called temperance move it, movement start, which are groups, which were groups that encourage health and self-preservation and try to like pull people out of the pit of ca- the chaos, the pit, the pit of um, illicit um, gambling and fighting that was chaos. Though that didn't really work, and they basically became two opposing groups. Um, but another thing that noted is after this point in time. Suicides began happening on Cybertron. Eee, that's that does it's specific, not sound. It is specifically noted that a lot of weekly um, journals or columns started to note suicides began happening, which was basically a thing that never happened on Cybertron prior to this era. The, that's interesting. Yes, you'd think um, at least one bot would have not wanted to keep living at some point. Yes. I mean, I'm sure it happened, but certainly... Not as regularly? Not as not as regularly, or not to the extent that it is that notable. That, regularly is a very weird word. Yes, yes it is. But it's also, but that, that information about the suicides occurring is very troubling when it is also noted that this entire era lasts 20,000 stellar cycles, or 20,000 years, to human speakers. Uh, Cybertron, well, Cybertronian years, whatever, however long those are. Um, and even Alpha Tron notes this, except for a few notable events from like an uh, incredible artistic moment or an incredibly notable um, athlete, the, the era was incredibly dull. This is sounding very much like the Great Depression now. Yeah, but it gets even worse because even the well itself is basically in a depression. Um, so it's, and the, it's like part depression, part prohibition, yeah. part other things, probably. Yeah, it's yeah. This is just the worst time. The uh, worst time. Um, but uh, speaking of the well being in a depression, uh, it is noted by the third millennia of the Age of Rust. The well. They, they thought the well was producing few Cybertronians when they had spread the well out too far. Now it was producing even less, just producing one or two at a very sporadic rate. That's very small amount at very sporadically large intervals of time. Um, but the problem was the bots that were coming out were not like the bots that had come out before. What when, was, oh, you were about to say, never mind. What? I was going to ask what was different, but then you started talking again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how they came out before was when a Cybertronian was formed, it spark was expulsed from the all spark and rise through the well of the all sparks of the well of all sparks. As it rised, it would be able to gleam in, get gleam and gain information on the current state of Cybertron. From there, it could choose its own desire for life and its own function and its own name. Well, not necessarily its own function. Um, it would be able to choose what it wanted to do and give itself its own moniker, its own designator. Right. That was before. Now, the bots came out without names. Hmm. They... And what Alpha Trion, and while there were theories around, Alpha Trion knows what was going on. There was such little hope of social progression and individuality. Everything was so stagnant, nothing interests the new sparks that were coming online. They didn't even bother taking a name because they saw no point. They just accepted the fact they were going to be in a dull, laboring position for the rest of their lives. And that was that. I would 
I would have thought it was just writer's block. Nope. Nope, nope. That's that's how bad it was. The bots were just so... They effectively were born depressed. If that. Because... Were, was, it counts, a, was it a Great Depression? Oh. Um, I'll leave. That's it. I'm, I'm leaving... Yeah, I, I I can take over the show from here. Yeah, uh, the, you don't you don't need me. Um, that's it. I'm done. Goodbye. I can't believe it. He's actually walking out the door. He actually closed the door. Okay then. Oh, he's back. There we go. Okay, never mind. Okay, I forgot I've got nothing else to do today. I'm back. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, but continuing on with this, as you would term it, Great Depression um, of the birth of these nameless Cybertronians, um, the Council takes note of this and notes that Cybertronians as a species are effectively devolving. They are being born as standard machines. Effectively. They take their function, they do their function, and that's all they do. And this is where Soundwave comes in, because Soundwave, as I'm pretty sure we know in previous chapters, was on the council. Was on the high council. I remember it being mentioned in probably the time when they took over, they um they threw the Quintessons out. Yes, I'm sure that's when it was mentioned. I just could not remember if it was or not. Um, but Soundwave is here, and he becomes, and he's very vocal about this de-evolution. He yells at the co council for being responsible for it because he takes the note of like this stagnation of Cybertronian society as what's causing it, and that Cybertronians are supposed to be individual and individuals yet equal. However, they are all being born equal and non-individual, and he hates that. He still does not rate himself higher than these bots that are being born, but he finds this unacceptable, and it, he finds the bureaucracy is what's killing them. It's killing their species. And he rants and raves to the council, but at the end of the day, the council is just like, we got to do more research, we've got to figure out more information, and they continue to grind their heels. Soundwave quits. He takes his vow of silence that we see in the Prime cartoon, Except for that one time when he did talk, maybe? We'll talk about that, I'm sure. Probably. Just because it's notable. Um, and then he takes basically the lowliest job he can get. So as he can truly know what it's like to be one of the laboring class. And does it note what job that is? or? Uh, let me... I wrote the note down, but I didn't write exactly what it was. I would assume um, garbage man... Cashier, busboy. Do they have busboys on Cybertron? We later learned that he had taken up a job at a relay station, not, relay station near Kaon City, working shifts and living the life of the low, lowest caste. No matter who wrote or tried to contact him, he would have had nothing more to do with any of us. So, like a mailman. Seemingly. I, I can think of worse jobs than a mailman. Yeah. Or he was well. He, or he was just uh, on the comms. He was just like the guy that, or, or maybe he was just like one of the people that like transferred you to people. Oh, so like a receptionist. Yeah. That's pretty soul crushing, but I don't know. I still think being a busboy at a McDonald's yeah. would be worse. I mean, you're also doing it in Kaon City, which is the hive of villainy on Cybertron. Yeah. Greatest hive of scum and villainy in the side of the galaxy. I yep. know that's not the quote, but I can never remember what he says exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, but after um, Soundwave leave, Alpha Trion notes that he is right, that the bureaucracy is stagnating and killing the planet. Um, and he begins to wonder, what would it take for the 13 primes to return? A uh, big paycheck. Possibly, because, I mean, they didn't come when the Quintessons invaded. They didn't come when the entire species was being in, um, being threatened with a plague. So why would they come back now? Or would they come back now is the question. 
Uh, they maybe, didn't even come. They weren't a, even all. Uh, yeah. Maybe a movie deal and then a crossover movie a few later, a few years later. It'll be like the Avengers, but with big robot gods. No, 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 it, no. It will be Infinity War. It's going to be the most ambitious crossover in history. I still think that goes to Scooby Doo meets the Harlem Glo- Globetrotters, <laughs> which there were uh, like five of those for the record. Hey, we got to talk about a topical meme, huh? Anyway, that doesn't date the episode at all. This won't sound stupid in three months. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Alpha Tron's wondering what can be done. Um, well, he also notes why Sentinel is doing nothing. Because if he fears he does engages in change, there will be riots that oppose the change. Um, while it is noted earlier that they have a limited supply of energon, the truth is they don't know they don't know the exact amount of energon. So if all and that there are several restrictions on the energon, so if they were lifted, the entire population would know what's going on and be in a state of panic. As well as um, some of those raider groups that exi- that I mentioned before during the, the during the age before the Quintessence still like exist. The wreckers. Yeah, the other groups, though, since the Wreckers have basically become the militarized police force. Yep. Um, the other groups still exist, and Sentinel fears if they change, that will open the way for them to come in, ruining the so- society completely, and therefore they all go back to the tribal era. So he, That's, keeps, um... he keeps the broken system in line because he thinks there won't the broken society in line existing and in place because he thinks there won't be a society if they do something. That but, sure is one way of looking at it. Yeah, that's that's at the very least how he's viewing it. However, um, Alpha Tron's not content with this, so he goes to talk to the supercomputer that we've mentioned a couple of times, the primes themselves created. Vector Sigma. Um, who, if you are familiar from the other mythology, is the core of Cybertron, separate in this continuity, since the core of this of the aligned continuity of Cybertron is the Allspark and the co- and the Well of Allsparks. Does Vector Sigma still have a face? Um, no. Worst Vector- continuity ever. I want a new one right now. Vector um, Sigma needs a face. But of note, um, Vector Sigma here is a massive supercomputer that the Primes themselves created that, ha- that, they- that functions as a repository for them, but also can respond to them. They programmed it with higher intelligence, and they cannot, and they cannot even guarantee if they themselves, they, can, they themselves are unable to tell if they actually created life when they created Vector Sigma. But Vector Sigma is basically ingrained into Cybertron and partly connected to Primus's spark at the core of Cybertron. But there are still many mysteries about him. However, Alpha Trine goes talks to him. They don't talk. This is this is definitely important to note. They Alpha Trine does not talk to him at the, at the place where we find out during the Prime cartoon where the actual like base core for Vector Sigma is. Um, there's basic. Ba- basically, Alpha Trine goes out past the Sea of Rust into the wastelands to talk to an extension of Vector Sigma that is projected to him via hologram. Why not just go to the actual Vector Sigma, though? Because it's in K-On. Why is everything in K-On? Who thought, hey, let's put all this stuff here in K-On? Because that K-On was safe. in a city when Vector Sigma was made. Then why'd they build it around... Then why because did they build the capital around Vector Sigma? That would have be- made more sense. Because they buried it before civilization ever took root, and the thirteen split up and just decided to like let the Cybertronians ignore their history or like lose their history before that point in time would have occurred. All right, I'll I'll bite. We'll go with that then. Sure, we'll go with that, and not it's a stupid setup. 
anyway, um, so AlphaGo stocks to Vector Sigma, um, and of note, Vector Sigma does confirm something that it that has been troubling uh, Alpha Tron. The reason why there is a lack of new sparks coming out is related to the amount of energon remaining here. Population must not outstrip survivability. Um, okay. Wow. I know this one. I know who said that. I just don't remember his name. Is that Marxism? It sounds like it'd be Marxism. Okay. Possibly. Let's go, let's go see if that's a quote. If that's a direct quote. Because I, I know it was either him or someone else who said that there's only a limited supply of everything, and if the population goes over that, there's no way to make more of it. I think that's Marxism. I'm, I'm getting a lot of articles relating to natural selection. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's go to Wikipedia. That's going to help. Yeah. Let's see. Give me something simple. Uh, no, this is something about capitalism. It's capitalism? No, that, yeah, it's a different thing. I can't remember who said it. I think, I think it might be more this particular variety of the quote is more in tune with, ter with um, quotations that tend to be used in scientific journals talking about natural selection and demographics and... Um, Population survivability and those kinds of scientific journals. Yeah. No, my thing um, was more about like food. I mean, it, a lot of those do tend to be regarding towards food um, and yeah. the ability for the for us to create enough resources to keep our current population existing. We've gone off track again. The point is, it's not Marxism, and I don't remember anything from ninth grade. Yeah. Now, why would it, wait? Why did I think it was Marxism? Because Marxism whole thing was just everyone shares equally. That's communism. Okay. Yeah. Well, Marxism and communism are kind of two different things. It's anyway. Similar. It's we're getting off track. I yes. don't remember what it was anyway. I was thinking of. At anyway. some point I'll figure it out and I'll just tweet it out later. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so where so right. Population must not outstrip survivability. Um, but the main thing Alpha Tryon is thought comes to Vector to talk about is getting the matrix of leadership to instill hope in the Cybertronian population and especially the High Council. Um, the Vector Sigma notes that the matrix of leadership is in fact on is on Cybertron and will appear soon. However, it cannot it is not time for that yet. However, he does bestow Alpha Trion the badge of Vector Prime, which is still a symbol at the very least to try to hopefully instill something in Sentinel. So he takes that, he leaves, he goes back to his quarters and writes in the Covenant's premise. However, this time is substantial. Something happens when he writes in the Covenant of Primus. The quill begins to shake in a way that makes Alphatron concerned. And the last bits of his message that he is writing uh, are a little distorted but still legible. And the exact thing he writes is, Something must occur for 13 to awaken, but what? It must be soon. It is desperately needed. If not now, then when? And then the Covenant goes insane. It dissolves the text. It becomes red hot. It, it becomes fire. Alpha Tron can't touch it. He touches it. He gets zapped by it. Um, That's not how fire works. I know, but like it also like it's mentioning like. A lot is happening. It specifically mentions Alpha Tron getting shot, and it also mentions getting too hot to engage with because it's writing, rewriting, and deleting and modifying everything, basically. Transformers, Age of Ultron. Yeah. Anyway, 
However, Alpha Trine is attempts to try to read what it is writing and unwriting whatever. Among the things that he can deter, um, read are catalytic reaction for every protagonist, an equal and an opposite. Wake him by the movement of his own heart. What happens, uh, and this, and I did forget to mention this before, Vector Sigma has a note that part of the reason he doesn't give the Matrix over is because while it is instilled to be used by good people, bad people may also want it, and that having the Matrix of Leadership may not give you the error you are expecting. Mm. And this is leading up into that. Why, because, is, why is everything always so cryptic? Why can't they just say, hey... You know that thing you want? No, because this is going to happen if that thing you want is you get the thing. And that's exactly what seems to be happening, because the next thing that's happening after this is um, the, form the, the rise of Megatron and Orion Pax and Megatron becoming friends, which eventually leads into the Great War. And after this whole event... Of okay, the at this point, he's still Megatronus, though, right? We'll get into that in a moment. There's just a little bit I want to mention here. Um, after this whole craziness going on with the Covenant and the Quill, Alpha Trine wonders, and this is something he's never experienced before. He's held the, the Covenant and the Quill since he was born millions of years before. And he wonders, did I just write into the future? Did I affect fate? and the future by making that, by writing that down. Because, and what's next seems to happen, because literally the same, the same day he gives the badge of Vector Prime to Sentinel, Megatron comes up on their, on the, on their radar. Hmm. And it is specifically Megatron. You do bring up a very good point. Um, Megatron at this time, we did discuss him before. He was the minor D16 that was born during the Quintesson era and has been underground mining since. He had to, he had recently started um, when the when the council hears about him, D16 um, started taking part in the gladiatorial pits and was really good at it. Um, because of that, and he, him doing something, he decides to take on a name, Megatronus. However, the crowds that cheer for him shorten into Megatron, and that's the moniker that sticks. Because it's better for chanting. Yes. Megatron. You know, Megatronus. It just doesn't sound the same. Because, I, for whatever reason, chants work best when they're three syllables. Yeah. Or two syllables. Four syllables gets weird. It's uh, too many syllables. Yes. Uh... But, so, Megatron's coming to power. He's starting to have ideas. He's starting to sh express his ideas to other people. And at this point, Alpha Trine's like, uh, Alpha Trine gives Orion the information on Megatron, which is not necessarily, which is probably something he would have done, but it's something he w became reluctant to do after he went back from the council meeting <sighs> discussing Megatron and seeing that the Covenant already has it in it that he, that Alpha Tron gave the information to Orion Pax. Mm. As if that had already occurred. It was specifically written in the past tense. It was not, it was going to happen. It was, it had happened. Even though it had, had not yet. This is interesting. So he was, what was he trying to decide then? What? What was okay? So I, I blinked out for a second. I heard he was gonna say something about Megatron, and I missed something. Clearly, you were saying something about the book again. Yes. Okay. So, so there was the council meeting with um, discussing Megatron, and then Alpha Trion goes back to his quarters with the information. The Covenant noted that Alpha Trion had, uh, what's the exact quote? Alpha Trion took the recordings made by the Gladiator Megatron and directed them for safekeeping to the hands of his assistant, Orion Pax. 
this was not something that was done yet. This was something that the Covenant wrote as if it had already been done. Okay, there we go. That's what I missed. Yes. So, and that's why Alpha Trion was reluctant, kind of reluctant to do it. Because he, the, he knew he, he, after writing that question of when the 13th is going to come, he, he realized he might have done goofed. Maybe the thir- Did he think, hey, maybe the 13th is already here, or did he think... Alpha Trion already knows that Orion Pax is the re- reincarnation of the 13th. The, thir- the 13th Prime. It's just the question, it's the question he asked of how was the 13th Prime going to come back? Ah. Because Orion Pax exists without the information or the knowledge was the memories of the 13th Prime. So he just means the memories then. He wants the memories yes. back. Yes. And the bot that can inspire them to be a great leader again. It's a great, a great species. Yep. That, that's the quote that might be in bad taste. Uh, anyway. Um, but we're not going to talk politics. We're going to talk yes. robots and their politics. Yes. But anyway, so after Alphatron gives the information to Orion Pax, Orion and his pal Jazz go to k and witness and engage with Megatron. Uh, Orion comes back with a lot of uh, thoughts in his head. He's both sympathetic to Megatron's point of view and also incredibly critical of his view at the same time. Because he agrees that social movement, uh, the change in the societal norms has to change, but not to the extent that Megatron is encouraging it. So what Um, you're saying is he's being neutral just like what 13 did. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, he's trying to be the peacekeeper of the group as his, as the book even notes that his name originates from, Hmm. as in the real world, Orion Pax means peace hunter or hunter of peace. That sounds a a little bit less peaceful than you'd think, you know, because hunting is involved, but I mean, I guess, sure. Well, yeah, peace hunter makes a bit more sense with the IDW cop Orion Pax. Yeah, but in this one, he's a librarian. Yeah, he's a clerk. He's a clerk. In a library. Yes. Hence, librarian. Yes. Um, but it is a note that like, oftentimes when they want to degrade Orion or Optimus, they call him a clerk rather than a librarian. Well, because... Yeah, well, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about him being a librarian and... Yeah that being a little bit less peaceful, a little more peaceful than Peace Hunter, which would be more a cop yes, thing. that is very true. Hey, we've um, gone off track again. Good yes. job. Okay. Good job, but me. Any- anyway, um, so the two of them do become fast friends, and then this chapter does like fast track this a bit because they do begin to split um, and divide a bit, especially after the first terrorist attack from Megatron's organization, which in here it's not stated that he denies it, but in the Exodus it is noted he denies it. We'll talk about that when we get to Exodus. Um, and then we get to the council meeting um, where Megatron and Orion Pax engage with the council and try to encourage a change in society. Um, and then where Counselor Halogen reveals that the Matrix is about, uh, someone needs to find it and that it, that Orion Pax is going to be the one to do so, and he shall forever be, and that his new name shall be Optimus Prime, which enrages Megatron and basically sets off the Great War. The first battle would have been held in that room, but Orion Pax at least managed to convince Megatron to not to leave peacefully with the recognition that they were officially at war. Um there, before before the council meeting, it was also noted um, Orion Pax did try to dissuade Megatron from more, his some of his more extremist viewpoints, and for Orion Pax, Megatron almost did, almost hmm. did, but he was forged too much in the likeness of his namesake Megatronus, and would always only trust himself with everything, with power and everything. So I should have been what. <laughs> I, I was thinking that I wasn't going to say anything. I, I was. Needed to, it was. It was right there. I needed to make the joke. Yeah. It needed to be said, whether I agree with the statement or not. The joke needed to be made. Yep. But 
uh, the thing that um, the last thing this chapter notes after the split um, on top well, also noting that Sentinel, that Alpha Trine notes Sentinel Prime was probably relieved with the fact that the High Council is no longer properly in charge with this declaration of war, um, but also notes the fact of how much resentment there is in Megatron against Sentinel Prime and what he, repre- he and the Council represent, and that Optimus aligning with him is the ultimate betrayal, effectively, that him taking the name Optimus Prime is effectively a continuation of the old system and believing things will not change. However, he also holds contentment for the Quintessence, which, when this was released, was basically like um, hint, hint of what was going to happen in Transformers Retribution, but we'll also talk about when we get there. But that is the end of that. The next thing that happens is the Great War. However, we are not talking about that because we are going to be backtracking over some of this information in Exodus and then going on to the war itself in that. Yeah. Backtracking. Uh, Everyone's favorite. Yeah, this is where it's confusing. It's like the Infinity Knot and we're trying to figure out where to start with all of this jumble of a mess. But um, before we sign off, Zeus, did you have any other comments you wanted to make in regards to anything from this chapter? Um... It's a lot of stuff that happened there, and it's kind of... I've got nothing, actually, because half of this has already left my mind. You know, I'll I'll remember some of it, forget it in the morning, listen to the recording back, and forget it again by Thursday. (laughs) Uh, I'm probably not going to forget it as immediately. Like, a lot of this is, like, really minor detail stuff that that I've been nitpicking over, that I'm, like, I'm just taking a fine-tooth comb to it. But this is what I enjoy. This is the lore bits and the st- the good the good stuff that we don't usually get in Transformers. And like, oh, oh my god, this is the best. <sighs> Sorry, you're um, you you, you want to sit down for a minute? You need some water. You, I've been sitting down. What are you talking about? Do you want do you want to calm down a little bit, buddy? You're Fine. you're getting a little getting a little overexcited there. Need to Fine. need to calm Fine. down. I mean, I have to calm down now because we are done with this episode. And good that we are, because I need to get food. Yeah, um, but quickly, um, thank you for listening to this episode. Uh, if you want, you can listen to this podcast on the Nerdy Geek Talk YouTube channel, as well as on. Basically, anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Uh, Google Play. Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Stitcher. Podbean, Stitcher. I believe those are the main ones. Those are the ones that Eric always says. Yes, those are the ones he always says. But basically, wherever you can find podcasts, you can probably find this podcast as well as every other podcast on Nerdy Geek Talk. I am also on the Steel City Bots podcast that is on this channel. That is probably the most regular show on the channel, from my understanding. Um, Bruce, are you on anything else on this channel? I've been in a couple episodes of Steel City Bots, but this is the only thing I'm a regular on. Okay. I yes. I do stream on Mondays though on my own usually. Yes. That's um, underscore Zeus on Twitch. It's mostly just Super Mario 64. Mm-hmm. Though I'm thinking uh, about doing some other stuff. Yes. Um, is there anywhere else that people can get in touch with you or you can, anything else you'd like to mention? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Zeus. That's the word underscore spelled out. Uh, that's where I am most of the time. You can also check out my Instagram at pcm.exe where I post occasionally. Most of what I do is on my story. And then you can also find me on YouTube at PCM Reviews where I just uploaded a review for the Kubion Bao, Voyager Nemesis Prime, and I'm working on a review for Power of the Prime's Battle Trap. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Um, you and can find- also, I'd like to apologize for once again ruining this continuity. <laughs> I mean, that's what we—that's what Mr. Line is about, ruining, ruining the continuity. I yeah, guess. but I ruined it in a bad way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can find me on, on a bunch of places, but most notably on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all at SoundJack426. Uh, my YouTube channel is predominantly a review channel. Um, I just posted, I just decided to do it since it's a finish, an official name and has an official combination of Elita Infinite, 
Isn't it Alita uh, Inf 1? Tinnid? Inf 1 yeah. night? Uh, whatever. There we go. Whatever. Um, but there, I, I have been a little quiet on my channel recently. I'm ready to, I'm getting ready to move soon, so it's probably going to, may still be a little quiet, so patience with me. Um, but there are my reviews, there's my uh, podcast that just talks about different nerdy things that I like. Um, the last episode was with Eric talking about Eric Crownover from this channel. You should, you should know him if you listen to this channel, hopefully. Uh, but if you don't, check him out on the other podcast because the other podcast he's on and he, he's a good, he's an overall swell guy. You, um, the only, but, there's only one person I know who doesn't know it, and it's Chris. And Chris, if you're listening, how's it going? <laughs> uh, but uh, I was talking with Eric about the Black Panther movie recently, and this weekend I'm talking with the musical Chicago with my girlfriend on my channel. Um, I also am attempting to do shorts. I hoped to get another short out very re recently. However, that editing is taking much longer than I anticipated. But anyway, you can also find me on Instagram where I post photos of all the toys I've reviewed, as well as Twitter where I just hang out. So, you know, shoot me a message if you want to. Um, but also for Steel City Bots, I'm, I'm in um, Nerdy Geek Talk. You can follow us on Twitter at Nerdy Geek Talk, and Steel City Bots has its own uh, Twitter and Instagram accounts at Steel City Bots. Um, but that is all for today. Uh, so thanks for listening, guys. Bye. See you later.